Setting goals in 90 day sprints is my absolute favorite goal setting method. And today I have four 90 day sprint goal setting type planners that I'm going to compare for you. So if you also like setting your goals quarterly, then you can figure out which of these options may be your best bet. Now I do have some sort of affiliation with each of these companies and I do want to disclose this that up front so you know exactly where I'm at. Um, now I do wanna say I have purchased every single one of these companies books prior or currently um and i absolutely stand by each of these companies they're all incredible and i love what they do um which is why i'm partnered with them so first up is our fresh start daily goal setting planner by the cultivate what matters team i have bought the power sheets from this company in the past so here's my current years um they sell a lot of incredible products and when they came out with this 90 day version, um, I knew I had to pick it up. So this is basically their power sheets, but into a 90 day planner setting. And I'm gonna get into this, but these guys I am an affiliate for. So if you purchase them using my link, I do get a percentage of that sale. We have the Do Work Journal from Baron Fig. I do currently contract with this company. I work with them as a freelancer. Um, so I do have some skin in the game, but I'm not an affiliate for them. And I did purchase this one with my own money. Um, however, I have gotten some of their other products for free. So I want to specifically talk about this one because this is the most comparable um, in terms of a 90 day planner. Then we have the um, finishing Finisher Secrets. Um, 3.0 journal. So I was sent this one for free since I am an affiliate. However, I have purchased this one probably the most out of all of them because this was the company I knew about first. Um, and I've been using Finisher Secrets for years. Um, I have like three or four of these journals that I've purchased previously, but this is my first one of the 3.0 version. And then finally, we have the Clever Fox Goal Setting Planner. Um, this is the 13 week ultimate achievers planner. And this one I am also an affiliate for. I did get this planner for free as well, but I actually have um, four or five of their other products I have purchased with my own money. And one of them is the equivalent of this planner. It's just their older version. So all of these journals I have used prior. Um, I've worked with a lot of these companies for years. You guys probably have seen my videos on them, but all of these journals are really comparable in the underlying method. They're just very different in how they're formatted. And that's why I wanted to talk about them. So let's just get straight into the journals. So the first one, the Baron Fig Do Work Journal is 5.4 by 7.7 .7 inches in size. And it does only come in this one color. This is their colorway for the Do Work Journal. It does come with one like cloth ribbon to mark your page. And it does come with an elastic band to keep everything closed up. Next up, we have the Clever Fox notebook. This one on their website, it says it is 5.8 by 8.3 inches wide. Um, this does come in eight different colors and it has, again, an elastic band. And this one has a pen loop. This also has a little bit different of a cover texture. It's not canvas like the do work journal, but it's more of like a pleather. It's not bad. I think it'll hold up to like lint and things like that, but it does show some like grease and finger marks on here on occasion. I don't know if you can see it on camera too much, but if you have greasy fingers, this is gonna show up. Um, and then this one comes with three um, ribbons to mark your pages. One says today, one says week, and then one is blank to um, kind of mark your spots on there. The finisher's journal is very similar in texture to the Clever Fox. It kind of has that like pleathery feeling cover. It's kind of like plasticky almost. Um, and again, it does show like some greasy finger marks. This one, not so much. Um, Clever Fox definitely shows more, but that may be the colorway that I chose. So um, the finisher's secrets journal only comes in the one color as well. So kind of this navy blue. It does have the elastic and a pen loop. And this one comes with two ribbons, one to mark today and one to mark the week. And the largest of the group is the Fresh Start Planner. This is again, kind of like a canvasy finish. Um, it is more plasticky than the Do Work Journal. Um, the Baron Fig Journal is the only one that is like a true canvas cloth, which personally is my favorite. However, this one is a close second. It's more plasticky, but it has more of 
the texture of canvas, so it still has that really pretty look to it. Um, and this one is six inches by nine inches. It does come in four different colors and it also comes in a spiral version. So if you don't like these notebook spines, if they're harder to write in for you, this one does have a spiral version, um, much like their spiral goal planners and things like that. So that is kind of handy to have that option. Let's talk about how the notebooks lay. Um, the Power Sheet Planner is by far the stiffest when you originally get it. It doesn't lay completely flat right off the bat. I don't think I mentioned. It does have two ribbons as well. There's no writing or anything on it. Um, so while this doesn't lay flat perfectly, you can kind of force the spine down and as you use it, it does tend to lay more flat. So it's not terrible in terms of writing. It's very easy to write on the left-hand side if you're right-handed um, and vice versa. So this isn't a bad option. Um, the Finisher Secrets Journal also lays pretty dang flat. This one's maybe one of the better of the options. Um, however, the binding in the journal itself is a little bit cheaper feeling, I guess. It it holds up fine, but you can see a lot of the binding, so it feels a little cheaper than some of the other options. Um, but again, it lays super, super flat, so it makes it really easy to write on. Clever Fox is pretty similar in that regard, but I feel like this one has maybe um, a little bit better binding than the Finisher Secrets. So it lays very flat as well. You kind of get that little bit of extra fabric here, but it kind of can be squished down. Um, and right out of the gate, it lays pretty darn flat. But by far the best one for the flat lay is the Baron Fig option. Right off the bat, it lays really flat. It's super easy to write on. Um, the pages are really well bound. I would say this is probably the highest quality in terms of like the page binding. Um, it's just super easy to write in and I think it does the flat lay the best out of this batch. So now let's talk about the actual goal setting part of each of these planners because that's really, in my opinion, the most important aspect to this. And each one of these does it very different. So we're gonna start with Baron Fig just because that's our small guy. So what we have here is the quarter overview so you can put your dates in here. And then we have a spot for three different milestones. So this forces you to focus on just three goals. You have your milestone that you want to reach with three smaller goals underneath it, and you have three of those. Then you have a miscellaneous section, which is just a dot grid for notes. And then you have kind of a plan area where you can put your highlights of what's happening during the quarter. So we have month one, two, and three, where you can jot down any events that are happening or any plans that you want to make that coincide with your goals. In the Baron Fig journal, they also utilize this column space on the edge here that usually is kind of unused territory. And they have milestones achieved, progress, total hours spent, total wins, and satisfaction. And so this is just good really short and sweet overview of your milestones. Next up is our Clever Fox Planner. This one has a little bit more of an in-depth goal setting pages. Um, so we have the goal area here, what area the goal focuses on. If I achieve this goal, my life will improve in the following ways. Milestone one, two, three, and four, along with deadlines, and a space to write out for an accountability partner and for a reward. And then you also have kind of this mind mapping section here to basically brainstorm the goal itself. The Clever Fox Journal allows for five different goals. So there are five goal pages to plan them out before you get into the planning sections. The Finisher Secret Journal is a little bit more um, broken down, I would say. So there's a section here about setting smart goals and some real life examples that you can scan. You have the outcome goal. So what SMART goal will you accomplish within the next 90 days? And it has you set a time that you wanna accomplish it by. Action step to break down your goals along with deadlines. How to optimize your goal. So if your goal doesn't meet the following conditions, it says to go back and tweak them. This is basically just helping you set better goals up here. Your motivation of why you want to achieve the goal. And then you can track your progress as you go through. So. For this journal, we have one, two, three different goals, and then you can also set habit goals. So this one is kind of unique to this guy. Um, so there is a habit tracker in here where you can set up habits that you want to track over the next three months. 
um, and you just circle the month and go through it like that. And then finally, we have the Cultivate What Matters Goal Planner, and this one is by far the most involved. It comes with quite a few pages of goal setting planning. This basically helps you brainstorm the goals, and then you get to the actual goal pages. So we have the goal action plans. You write out your goal, why you're motivated, what resources are needed, what does success look like, what might happen if you don't make progress, how will you have fun, the area that it is kind of falling into, and then whether you are going to track the habits, finish lines, or big dream of the goal. And then you also have a blank section here to basically brainstorm what this goal is going to look like. There are eight goal setting pages total in this booklet, along with a word for the season and then another section to basically finalize your goals and write them out in like a quick, easy to glance at area. Each of these journals kind of come with their own instruction manual. So the Baron Fig Do Work journal has the instructions in the back of the journal. So we have the journal guide back here. And this basically walks you through how to use the journal, how to utilize productivity, and all of the elements that are included within this journal. It's short and sweet, but it gives you a great overview of how best to use this notebook. The finishers journal has a few welcome pages initially that teach you how to use it. It breaks down the contents of each section and has the index followed by the how it works pages. However, this is the journal that really has how to do it basically at the start of each section. So we have a section about the daily view that breaks it down, the weekly view, before the habit tracker you have the instructions. So before each section is kind of the guidebook, it's broken up throughout the journal. Clever Fox is the only one that comes with its own separate workbook, which I personally love this because then I don't have to have all of this living inside my journal. Once I know how to use my journal, I can get rid of this and then this is really just my words only. So I really appreciate this and it's super simple, but it's really well laid out and it's really easy to follow. It gives examples throughout and gives you some different tips and suggestions for how to best use the journal. The Cultivate Planner is really more of a guided journal than the rest. So like I said, this whole section has, this whole journal has an entire first section just dedicated to journaling and prompts and all of these things that basically help you set your goals for each season. So this really guides you through step by step and this one is the most guided journal out of the batch. However, if you don't like kind of that planning process or if you don't really need the guide, you just want a journal to track it all, this definitely will not be the one for you. I personally love this because I really like that guided aspect, um, but some people may find it tedious. Now let's get into the actual tracking process. So these are the pages that you're going to use on a daily or weekly basis to actually use the journals themselves. So in Baron Fig's Do Work Journal, we have the weekly overview page at the beginning of each week, which allows us to rewrite our goals from the beginning section and just kind of make some notes beneath it. There's a miscellaneous notes section down here. And then we have our five days listed out with some highlights of what's happening this week. The Baron Fig Journal is specifically for work. So there are only five days in each week in this journal, and this is the only one that utilizes the five day week. It really prioritizes rest on the weekends, which I appreciate, and that's why I use this journal specifically for work tasks and not personal goals. Then we get into the day overview, where we have our task list with three of them starred, so those would be top priority, and we have time tracker, where you can write down how long it took you, or how I use it is estimating when I should do the task during the day. You can also have this whole section for notes. This is great for meetings and things and when you started or when you finished. And again, Baron Fig utilizes the side columns for some extra information that you can check off during the day. And then I've also noted any note pages that we can make in the journal. So on each day you have a section for notes and then in the back section you also have more notes back here which are all just dot grid pages. Um, just like they're dot grid journals, they're really beautiful, like a really light gray. So you have plenty of freedom with what you wanna do on the notes pages. In the finishers journal, there's a few different pages where you actually track things. So we have the habit tracker. That's obviously going to be a section that you access daily. Then we have the actual weeks. So we have 
a day for each week, and this is undated, but they do put the day of the week. So if you are someone who, you know, wants to really structure your weekday, this is the way to do it. They do go through Saturday and Sunday. So if you want a seven day a week setup, this is the one to do. Um, and you have your primary tasks, so the most important, the secondary tasks, and then additional. And there's also like a time boxing type setup here with your notes and ideas section on the right, very similar to the do work journal. And then we also have a section down here for the highlight of the day, as well as a little quote each day, um, just kind of to motivate you. At the end and start of each week, we also have this page. So we have the weekly review to review the week prior, what worked, what didn't, how will you improve, and then a section to just kind of review your goals. And then we have the weekly planning, which is your priority and then any secondary tasks that you can track throughout the week. At the very end of the journal, once you have completed the quarter, there's also this quarterly review. It allows you to mark down any accomplishments, what did and didn't work, what you learned, next steps, additional thoughts, quarterly cleanup, and then additional note pages all throughout the rest of the journal. Within the Clever Fox Planner, we have monthly pages. So this one is one of the two that actually has a monthly calendar. So this has a pretty big monthly box with notes around the edges here. And again, this is all undated. And we have four monthly pages. So even if you're starting mid-month, you can still use this journal and carry it over into the following months. And then we have the weekly plan and weekly review. So we review our week's milestones. We mark down any focus, to-do lists, personal habits, did I reach all my milestones, why or why not, three biggest wins, what made me happy, what did I learn, how do I feel about my progress, and how will I make next week better? And then there's some notes section on the bottom here, as well as reviewed this week, goals refreshed, plan for next week, check boxes. So all of the weekly plans on this one are back to back to back. So you will flip to each day, which is why this one has the three bookmarks section down here, because you are flipping between the books. After your review sections, we get into the actual daily sections. So each day is a two day spread. There's a spot to write the date up top here. And then we have our morning review where you write your affirmations, what you're grateful for and what you're excited about, the activities that you have for today in six different categories, your work to-do list, personal to-do list and a notes section down here. And then on this side, we have today's main goal, top three priorities, Schedule for the day from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m., today's wins, and how you'll improve tomorrow. And then again, each of these days is the same all the way through the end of the journal. And in the back of the journal, we do have another dot grid note section. And finally, with the power sheets, we have a monthly spread. So you write the month up top, and this is just blank with a blue dot grid on the side. We have a nice big monthly spread. Again, no dates with some notes along the right column. We have a prepare well section for important to do's, upcoming tasks, on my mind, I'm hopeful that, I'm saying no to, I'm saying yes to. And then they utilize something called attending list. So this has encouraging words, your priority, monthly action items along with progress bars to fill in, weekly action items with five weekly check boxes to fill in, then we have another blank page followed by a dot grid note section. And then at the end of, or at the beginning of each week, excuse me, we have the weekly refresh. So we have what's ahead, important projects, deadlines, events, goals to focus on, habits to tend to along with the little habit trackers here and what matters most this week. And then we have the daily pages. So we have a 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. schedule. We have our priority checklist, with 10 to my goals, express gratitude and encourage someone as daily check boxes and today's win. This continues for seven pages before you get to your next weekly refresh. And this continues for five weeks at a time. So even if you have weird weeks mixed in here, it continues for those five weeks until you get to your month review tab, which has gratitude, good things, grows that are goals that are growing well, what is not working, what I read or listen to, 
favorite memories, and then another notes section before you get into the new month. Ultimately, all of these planners offer very different options. Personally, I love the Do Work Journal for work-specific tasks. So for things like projects, client work, if I'm going to be redoing a big project like launching a new website or a new course, this is my favorite journal for that. It's simple and to the point. It's easy to write out tasks and not worry too much about the fluff, um, but it helps keep me on schedule. For personal goals and just general improvement, I love the Cultivate What Matters series. I use the power sheets for my yearly goals, and so this is a really good way to shrink that down into one journal. This is a lot easier to carry on the go. So going forward, starting next year, I'll be using these instead of my power sheets just because they're a little more portable. And I do really love all of the prep work that goes into setting the goals because I think it's really good to reflect on all of them, especially when setting New Year's re resolutions or personal goals. Clever Fox is so affordable and they have just such a good suite of items. This is fantastic for someone who is just getting into the style of goal setting who wants a little more structure, but maybe doesn't want to stick to exact days. So if you miss a day or you skip a week, you're not missing a huge amount of your journal or you're not you know, neglecting huge sections of it. This still has some really great prompts to walk you through it, but they're all very similar and consistent. So it doesn't feel as tedious to fill out as maybe the Cultivate What Matters. This is a great option for personal goals and work goals because there's the two different sections. So this is a great one especially if you work in a corporate setting and you want to be able to bring this with you. It's small enough to throw in your bag and carry it on the go. And the finisher's journal is one of my favorites if you want a little bit more extras when you are goal setting. So the finisher's journal company makes an entire course and email series that is all based on goal setting. So if you want ongoing support and other resources other than just this journal, they are a fantastic company to purchase through. If you have a hard time with setting realistic goals or you need help setting good goals that you're able to follow, this is a really great journal because it really pushes you to focus on just one primary thing and set really good goals. If you want to track your quarterly goals, with an analog method like a notebook, these are four of the best planners I have ever tried. I've tried a lot um, and I've tried, you know, bullet journaling and things like that as well, but I really love the guided journal um, of each of these and I think they all serve a really great purpose. They've all served a purpose for me in my life um, and as, you know, things have changed, I've picked up different ones or used different ones, but ultimately they all will help you get to the same point of just achieving your quarterly goals, and just really keeping track of them intentionally. Thank you for watching as always. And if you're interested in maybe a digital planner, then check out this video right here. And this is the video that YouTube thinks you will like.